Late in Bach's life, Bach became interested in musical efforts that summarized basically his life's work. And perhaps no, no effort of his was more powerful and more effective than his effort that led to the B minor mass. Musicologists like to say that the B minor mass was more compiled than composed. And I think in many ways that's right. I, I agree with that. But what does that mean? What it means is that Bach wrote 300 cantatas in his lifetime. And he said to himself, of every cantata I wrote, and, it, and the average cantata is probably six or seven mo movements, so that's 2,000 plus movements, right? Of all those pieces of music, what is the one that absolutely best unequivocally gets at the idea that this piece of text has in mind in the setting of the Mass. The idea of curie, the idea of pleading for mercy, or the idea of gloria, joyful expression of praise, or the idea of laudamus, a certain kind of praise within the creed. And he went through and he found all those pieces and he put them together and added the text of the Mass to it. Where he thought he maybe had not gotten exactly what he wanted, he wrote new music. And the result is the B minor mass, one of the greatest achievements of Western civilization, period. In the B minor mass, Bach used everything. He, in addition to using all these cantatas that were available to him, he used all the musical resources of his day. He used every instrument he could that was available and every musical form. We have flutes and oboes and oboe d'amores and French horn and, and trumpets and timpani and bassoons and strings and timpani and all the soloists and the choir. I just can't say enough about the love I feel for the B minor mass. Um, when I think of the Gloria, for example, the exuberance, bum, 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 ba, 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 bum, 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 that, that just re-energizing, powering through the melody going again and again and again, and the choir coming in and the three trumpets blazing away and the two flutes and the two oboes and everybody and the full choir singing. It's just beyond expression to me how unbelievably beautiful it is. But then, you know, the, he... You'd say, well, that does it, right? But the next text is Laudamus, we praise you. And what can Bach do about that? Well, he has, okay, use the full orchestra, I'll use a solo violin. And I'll have it be virtuoso. And I'll have it have interesting mu rhythmic ideas. And, uh, and, and I'll have it go flying up and down. The praise of, of this kind in Laudamus is kind of effervescent. It just never stops. It goes on and on, each, each part of the text. And when he gets to various things like, uh, that are more um, plaintive, he is very effective. Qui tolis peccata mundi, you who take away, tolis, take away peccata, the sins of mundi, who takes away the sins of the world. And he writes a melody... simplicity that's very beautiful the tolis is is like bells a, a kind of reminiscent of a of something you think of associated with church and miserere nobis have mercy on us that's da 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 bum that sighing plaintive request for mercy is just amazing Bach also, in, in this piece, has many symbolic elements for the creed. Um, he does two things I find very interesting. The first is the, op the opening melody is one that we often don't recognize. Sounds like a plain melody. And in fact, it was a Gregorian chant. That, but it was the chant used in Bach's church. 
Bach's congregation and Bach's audience, if you will, for this piece would have recognized this as something they sang in church when they got to the creed. They sang the creed. And underneath that, the bass line goes... On and on and on. What do we call this? We call that a marching bass line or a walking bass line. And, wh and why? Because, again, in Bach's uh, highly stylized way of thinking, faith is not something you prove in science. You walk, if you will, in faith. So while he has this tune, underneath it, we're walking in faith. The tune is, the, is a, a statement of faith, and we, which we accept, we can't prove. We, ex, we choose to accept, and so we have the melody of the credo and the walking in faith underneath it. Then we get to, within the creed, various parts of the creed. Here's one of my favorites, and I studied with Helmut Rilling, who was the first person in the world to record the complete works of Bach. He finished in time for the tricentennial of Bach's birth. 16, Bach born in 1685. He finished in 1985. And I remember he said to me once about this spot, this is et in unum. And the two are, the, are one. The two are the same yet different. That's the text in the creed. God the Father and God the Son, the two are the same yet one. And I remember Rilling said to me, you know, if you heard a preacher preach about that, it would take him many words, maybe a 20-minute sermon. And when he was done, you still might not understand it. He said, but Bach does it in just a couple notes. He takes two oboe demores, and he has the first one play this. And immediately the second one plays. One plays staccato. The other legato, smooth. The same yet different. Now that's not in the text. That's only in the music. And like so many things in the B minor mass, that's where we get it. And the B minor mass has all kinds of symbols, the sanctus, the from Isaiah six, the and the not, the three winged cherub, the the, the wings of the cherub. Bach put, shows all of that with the choice of music in six, two choirs and six parts. Um, uh, just again a symbolic effort but at the end Bach ends with the, the mass ends with Agnus Dei Qui Tolis Peccata Mundi Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world have mercy on us and then Bach adds Dona Nobis Pacem What can you say about that melody? Well, it's smooth, doesn't it? It goes by steps. And the notes tend to be half notes and whole notes. Why is that important? It's important because Bach's forefather, Palestrina, the great um, church music composer in the whole generation before Bach and Handel, would have written that melody. He would have written it in half notes and whole notes with a few quarter notes thrown in for the motion. That's the music of our forebearers. The prayer for peace, this human longing for peace, goes back through time. As soon as Bach has all the people in the choir sing that, bass, tenor, alto, soprano one, soprano two, he writes a second melody. <laughs> That melody, you could imagine being played by the, the orchestra and being developed and being called a Brandenburg Concerto. That was the modern Baroque music of Bach's day that might have sounded more instrumental than chorus, choral. So we have this prayer for peace that goes upwards towards heaven in the old style of Palestrina, 
that's transformed into the modern style of Box Day. He's saying this human longing for peace, this huge yearning goes backwards in time and forward in time. It's almost, if you will, the universal thing that we seek in our world and our lives. For me, that music is almost more than anything why the B minor mass is such a worthy piece because I share that longing, I think you do too, and I think the music does a splendid job in getting at it. It starts with one voice, just the bass. Tenor comes in, alto joins, sopranos join, and then the strings, and then the winds, and then the trumpets, and then the timpani, and then it's all blazing away in this fervent prayer that ends the B minor mass. What a wonderful piece. Don't miss your chances to hear it. It's one of the greatest achievements that we've ever had in our Western civilization.